Interestingly, uh, people that have met with the uh, Deputy Registrar General um, of Ontario um, at that time, it would have been uh, uh, Judith M. Hartman in the case of some people. That was the Deputy Registrar General. And not here, um, you have to understand, these videos are just dealing with fact, uh, even though uh, the world that, that the governments work in, work on is in fiction. Um, but we're here just bringing facts together. So sometimes I think people misunderstand that I'm declaring judgment on these government leaders. That's going to be God's position to do. He sends his son, Jesus Christ, who is the righteous judge who will actually take care of business on this. It's not up for me to do that, and it's not up for you. So, uh, you know, be at peace because that's what we're here to represent. We're peacemakers, unlike the Canadian government that are called peacekeepers, in a strange sense, still bearing arms. But we're peacemakers. Now, um, they mentioned that uh, these deputy registrar generals have mentioned that these are a valuable token. I, of course, uh, do research, so I want to go find out what a valuable token is. Can't find it in the Canadian Law Dictionary. I can only find where it says C, uh, literally a uh, token of a counterfeit token of value, which is a fraud, which is a token of fraud, basically, in other words. Well, because it's not a real citizenship, you couldn't have one. You're not a member of the bar. You didn't write the legislation. You don't, you're not party to whatever's going on here. You're a stranger to this contract. So, we have to understand that when we wake up to this, truth is going to start to fill our soul with the Spirit of God, and then we're going to be start, starting to walk with good faith, not with a bad faith name anymore. Your Christian name is good faith. The last name attached to saying you're a citizen of one of these legal nations is bad faith towards God. You've turned away from Him. So when you look at Isaiah's words in Isaiah 44, and I recommend that you read the entire chapter of Isaiah right from beginning to end, because it'll tell you about the idolatry, the silliness and foolishness of those who operate in the world of Satan and basically operate in idolatry and blasphemy to God. But this is what it states that God will do with those that provide these tokens of fraud or counterfeit tokens of value. It says in Isaiah 44, verse 24, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, and that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and make diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish. We have to remember that God allows them to exist, but they have limitations too. Isn't it interesting that he says you will frustrate the tokens of the liars? Well, who are the signing authorities on these tokens? Well, he who signs at the bottom is the subscriber. They're the ones that are under the scribes of the legal system. So these signing authorities are in the contract on behalf of whoever basically is obligated by these instruments, which are made by men's governments, not by God. So there is something that I found one day. It's probably the simplest thing I found that deals with wherever the government's party to the contract and that someone refuses to perform. And you'd be amazed to find out that it's called the Frustrated Contracts Act. In God's world, there's a covenant he has with you. In man's world, he does contracts. Don't be fooled. If you're involved in contracts, you're involved in Satan. 